What's going on, guys? This is the Gaines Podcast coming at you live with Roman. Sorry, <laughs> and Antoine. No worries, no worries. Try to catch Roman off guard. <laughs> he wasn't looking at all. So um, we're catching. We're 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 getting a good one going on because um, you know we're coming to the end of February, and this one's going to be about maintaining and finding motivation um, as the general statement of this episode. Um, but also just keep in mind, like, you know, people who are having like those New Year's, New Year's resolutions, you know, that are falling off the boat, falling off, is it falling off, falling on the wagon or falling off the wagon? I think I can, falling off the wagon. You can't get to the destination they're going. I think it's the other way around. It is, if you guys watch Seinfeld funny episode where yeah because like he's like why do they call why do they call it falling out of the wagon they should be calling falling off the wagon because you're anyways um motivation how roman and i kind of look at it um i'm probably going to go over like kind of like some ideas in the first part of it then if you guys haven't been watching roman's been missing out on the case studies so far it's back folks so yeah so we're we're roman's coming back at you live with another case study for those who missed it, he will get, you know, that satisfaction you guys crave from case studies today. Um, also, if you haven't caught short gains, short gains are out pretty consistently throughout the weeks. <laughs> Mostly. We'll, we'll leave that as like a loose uh, subject to talk on, on how consistent it is. <laughs> um, but short gains is out. It's a shorter or more concise version of the Gains Podcast. Um, we're trying to keep your investment of time in a, a, you know, to make it accountable and to, you know, if you do value that short gains episode to watch the full version um, of the Gains Podcast eventually, uh, depending on which episode you guys cater and like. Um, so motivation. How do we find and maintain it? Um, you know, everyone has different options or you know, opportunities of motivation, but some of these that I'm going to tell you guys is a little bit more detailed and it's going to keep you on track when it comes to like your fitness and health, um, because this is a fitness and health podcast. Uh, we want to, you know, maintain it, you know, this also might work for you in your regular, you know, your regular life, you know, with your job, your family, your relationships. Um, so don't be afraid to like, cater these towards those as well because honestly i might talk on roman's behalf but a lot of fitness stuff when it comes to like motivation and goals it helps me a lot when it comes to like family relationships work because everything you're gonna have goals towards i mean unless you don't have goals and i don't know as i say a lot of people already tend to have goals in place when it comes to a lot of other things than just fitness so that being said, the why, um, we mentioned it before, but like every time you're thinking about like stopping or thinking about like, you know, turning the other way, like what was the why in the first place? It could be a lot of different things like losing weight, gaining weight, becoming strong, maybe moving for the first time in forever besides like just working and like your daily movement. Um, so it doesn't matter how big or small the why is, kind of relate back to that. Where are you now? Where are you now means like, hey, like you did three months worth of work. Like you might be in that dark place. You might not be motivated, but did you lose that weight? Did you lose some weight? Did you gain that weight? Did you gain that strength? Did you work out two days a week? Cool. So where are you now? Like that's awesome. Like do you feel better? Do you feel like you've made an improvement on your health? sweet that's like another factor i think that's really important when it comes to maintaining throughout the whole year and not just the three months and stopping because your resolution is done um um do stuff that you love um i think i don't know if we talked about it personally or on one of the episodes but like roman i'm pretty sure i think it was you that mentioned this but honestly i think it was just us talking but if you're going into the gym and you're not doing something obviously that you don't love after the three months, it's working, but you don't love it. Go back in the gym and try something else. Um, I think, I think like that's like, 
like when Roman was helping me do like part of my 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 training last year, most of the year, pretty much, you helped me throughout the whole process. Like I sat down with Roman and said, like, "Hey, man, I don't like this. Like, what do you think about this? Like, even if you don't have a coach or a trainer, or if you do, you know, discuss those with yourself if you have to. Um, try to find something that you do love. Try something else." Um, and I, I did write down, like, I'll just kind of go back and forth, but I wrote down, like, if that gym doesn't have everything you need, then go to another gym. Check out other gyms. Like, a lot of gyms do day passes, yeah. if you didn't know. Like, call in, make sure it's okay, go on their website, like, check the website. Like, if another gym is not progressing with your goals and your, like, mindset, like, if, that, if that's something you need to be around that, then go to another gym because like a lot of gyms, you know, like if it's like a commercial gym, you're not going to see that. Like you're not going to see like-minded people. Like, so you might need to go to a specific gym. Like say if you like cycling, go to a cycling class only, go to a yoga studio, you know, go to a powerlifting gym, go to a more bodybuilding gym. Honestly, what they say about like like like-minded people is going to make you achieve more. Like do that. I couldn't, I can't stress that enough because like with me, like, you know, I, I surround myself with people like that too, because like, that's why Roman and I, you know, talk so much because like we have great ideas and goals towards our own lives where we can bounce it back and forth, um, when it comes to like training aspects. Um, that being said, if you change like areas, your settings and whatnot, I think that's a good opportunity. Um, if like look through your insurance plans. I, I want to. I think I mentioned it before, but make sure you know. Like sometimes insurance insurances have that um, that ability to allow you to like pay monthly, yearly for gyms within your region or area. Um, I know within Illinois, Blue Cross Blue Shield allows you to pay twenty five dollars a month, and you can go to a lot of gyms. Um, so if a gym's not working for you, you could just go to another one. Um, that being said, what another thing is I would say is a great idea if you're either losing or you're trying to maintain focus and like your goals, um, talk to a coach, talk to a personal trainer. Um, you know, if, if you can't afford or you don't want to afford it, um, another thing is to talk to your partner, talk to some family friends, yeah. yeah, or friends because like, a lot of the times, a lot of people are trying to maintain a healthier lifestyle. It just either one, you're not talking to them, or two, like, you know, like you're not already talking to them about it already. Like, you know, a lot of a lot, like, yeah, I say a personal trainer or coach first because you know they have the certifications, their license, all that good stuff for that, and they're very they work with it day in day out. But like, you know, honestly, some of that situation stuff doesn't work out, and I think. You know, when it comes to, like, your family, your friends, your partner, like, that is one of the best motivating factors because if you love and care about that person or people, you'll be you'll be on track no matter what. Um, so I did put that, and that's, that's, like, helped me a lot when I talk in the Roman, when I'm talking to my fiancé with training. Like, we, we bounce each other off, like, you know, not – Roman Roman's probably going to mention this, but not in a perfect, I mean, in a perfect world, you're always motivated, but there's going to be those times where you're not motivated and you're just going to need that push. Yep. And that's hands down perfectly, like just a general statement on that. <clears throat> um, review your progress. Um, so if you're a person that hasn't been making any progress, uh, maybe kind of take a step back and look at what you're doing to get f- moving forward and to move forward with your goals. Um, and, um, last thing I want to say before Roman starts getting into it, cause he's got a lot of good stuff that I want, want you guys to hear out is, um, set up new goals. Like I was, like I just said, kind of like a second ago, set up a new goal, see what you like. If you like something else, don't be shy to try something because if you live a full life, just doing the same thing and you don't like it, it's not going to be fun. But if you do like something else, try it out, like it, keep going on that. Yeah. And if you don't like it within a year, cool, switch it up. 
Yeah. Pretty like a micro goal to yeah. like a daily intention. Uh, seeing that's been like pretty popular um, with people. So yeah, you, you create like a micro goal, um, meaning like just for the day or just for the week. It doesn't have to be like for the whole year, um, or the whole you know, whole month even. Yeah. Um, so depending on what it is, maybe it makes more sense to set up a series of micro goals or like a, a progression of the goals. So, like, for example, if it's, if it's weight-focused, if you just started squatting and, you know, you've built up to 95 for four sets of eight on um, barbell back squat, high bar back squat, and your goal for the year is 135, that's something that Laura and I talked about. That's, like, a goal that she has. Um, and I was like, that's awesome. Like, you're doing so great. Like, you're making great progress. Like, keep it up type deal. And she was just like, yeah, you know, I, I think I should break it down into even, like, smaller goals and, like, a smaller time frame so that I have something that's more, like, in, in like, my line of sight and, like, you know, a little bit, like, closer to make sure that, like, it keeps me accountable type deal. Yeah. Um, so. And that's good because, like, yeah. I mean, we all have busy lives. Like, yeah. if you can do something on a daily basis instead of, like, thinking about the full picture, you're probably going to get lost in yeah. transit. Yeah. I mean, that make it easy for yourself. I, I mean, Rowan probably didn't want to say it because he's talking about Laura, but, like, you know, maybe she just wants to make it easier for herself because she's already got a busy life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, life's busy. So, like, we, we talk about it all the time. It's just, you you know, make it smaller and, you know, eat it up there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it also, like, I think it can help you refocus because if she said, like, oh, I'll do, like, 115 for four sets of eight. And sorry to throw you out there, babe. Um, She's probably not listening. <laughs> she might not listen to it. <laughs> if, you get, if you do, uh, I love you. Proudly, <laughs> keep up the hard work. Um, but um, yeah, so she was saying that she would like hit like a lesser weight in a shorter amount of time. So that might be like a perfect example for you to say like, okay, you might be in a similar situation, and like the the goal might seem like insurmountable. It, it kind of felt like that for the goals that I set at the beginning yeah. of the year, and. I'm really proud of myself because I'm making excellent progress, but it, it like, it kind of hit me because I also thought to myself, like, man, you're, like, so smart, like, how do you, like, always do this kind of thing where you just, like, come up with these things and, like, out of nowhere, and then, like, it always makes me think, yeah. where I was, like, I could use that in, like, you know, I, I could use that as, like, a prescriptive statement in my life, I could break down my goals into, like, smaller, more digestible, like, shorter time period goals as well, um, mm. so that, hopefully that, that's a helpful tip for you. Um, I did want to cover a couple of um, ideals based off of goal setting. We might have covered it before, but the SMART acronym. Um, so goals, you don't always have to follow this, but it's a good uh, model or platform that you can base your goals off of. I do recommend that you write your goal somewhere, whether like in a note or like on a piece of paper. I think we've talked about that in yeah. the previous um, Gains podcast episode. But um, SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Results-Oriented or um, rational, meaning like it makes sense, and timely. Um, so hopefully that, that helps with you. Yeah, if you, um, if you, if you did, I, I think we did like a goal setting. I think that was like the episode. Just go to that one if you want more of a detailed when it comes to like ideas and like, you know, processes on that as well. So yeah, Exactly. Um, we'll just refer to our, our other content. <laughs> there you go. Um, so I want to cover three basic positions where you could be with your goal and then go into the case study with um, our female lifter, Casey. Um, we complete, I completely made her up, so this is like a figmentary person. Don't like go search it to your Instagram like, Casey, I'm trying to find Casey. Like I'm going to go send her like, I mean, go ahead, send her like motivational like, you know, quotes or whatever. That's awesome that like we should all support and lift each other up. But um, this is like not a real person, but hopefully you can glean some. Casey is it. a paid athlete under Roman Long. Yeah. Um, With RP. <laughs> if, yeah, if you don't know this, Roman's actually looking for spots to fill. Uh, $20 a two, month. Two spots left. Two spots left. Get it now before you forget. Or they close up because, I mean, I've got people texting me right now. They want to get that spot. So. I mean, yeah, my phone's blowing up. I got yeah. like 150 text messages. Yeah, like, so if you if, might have already missed out, yeah. folks. <laughs> By the time you listen to this, you probably actually, yeah, you definitely did because this is probably four or five days after we put this out. So uh, still send me a text. Still, uh, still reach out to me on my Instagram because there I'll might put be you on more, the waiting yeah. list. Yeah, there might be a waiting list of one day. <laughs> okay, okay, we're joking. Hopefully, you understand. Uh, but okay, 
So three positions that you could be in with goals. Um, you could find yourself behind progress um, for or with your goal. Um, you might find yourself losing motivation. You might be exactly on target. Um, so um, you might want to ask yourself or beg the question, do you still want the same thing or have things changed at all? Or you could be exceeding progress for the goal still. You could ask the same question like, do you want to continue this pace or do you want to pivot? And I'll, I'll talk about like some methods or like strategies for pivoting. So jumping into the case study, uh, Casey is a 28-year-old female. Wait, did you do that on purpose? Casey, case study? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> He's just trying to make it easy for himself. That's what it was. <laughs> She's um, a 5'5 five five, um, female, uh, weighs approximately 200 pounds, and her yearly goal is to lose 12 pounds, which she believes is um, fits the, the SMART acronym. Um, she's created like a whole list of different strategies that she can abide by, which I would say is um, is a flexible rule set, uh, which I'll cover the difference between flexible and rigid, um, in that she allows herself um, opportunities to fit this in in certain times throughout the week based off of the fluctuation of her very busy schedule. Um, so two months into this fitness goal, so at the end of February, um, she's gained two pounds. I lost my notes. Uh, one second here, folks. Uh, Quick commercial break. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, so she's... Um, Roman Lawn Coaching, $20 <laughs> per day. <laughs> All right, so she's gained, um, she's gained two pounds. So she's swinging in roughly, on average, 202 pounds a day. Um, she feels like she's losing motivation, and she asks herself if she can even lose this weight or is she doomed to keep this on forever. This is kind of like her internal self-talk. Um, so... Uh, what she's doing right now, uh, she has a physical activity prescription, so she's lifting weights or performing resistance exercise training three times per week, which she's adhering to each week. Um, she's performing cardio slash running uh, two times per week. Um, sometimes this falls on the same day as weight training, but she does hit those numbers three and two. And uh, another physical activity goal she has is getting at least 10,000 steps in per day um, on average when you average it out over the week. So she looks to get at least 70,000 steps in um, with her with her Fitbit, we'll say. Um, for her nutrition, um, she's uh, cut out mostly um, processed foods. Um, that's a very, like, ambiguous term. So the way that she defined that is, um, like, box cereals, box meals, chips. She, but those uh, are really good. Those are really good. <laughs> and you don't have to do this, folks. This is just what... The, the plan that she set for herself in this has to a keep her situation. on track. Exactly. Um, she has a soft spot for ice cream, um, and she prefers to have it every night after dinner. So uh, part of her weight loss goal is to go from three scoops a night down to two scoops. Uh, her sleep, um, her goal is about six to seven hours per, per night. Um, she's a very busy work schedule, approximately 50 hours a week. And she's also working on starting up a photography business, which she dedicates approximately 10 to 20 hours per week. Her stress levels, uh, she admits, have been pretty high recently, but she enjoys her time on the photography business. It's a, a form of release um, for her, and she receives a lot of fulfillment from it. All right, so um, it begs the question, what can Casey do? Is it appropriate for her to keep um, trying to progress in this goal or to pivot? Um, so what kind of ideas like off the bat would you provide to Casey as like either like you know to continue her motivation or to like um, you know help assist her in this in this like um, weight loss goal that she has yeah I, I mean just like look at what she is she did you note down if she's recording all this too as well um let's say in this situation she is okay we'll take a step back and just say like let's review what you, what she's been doing um is it too much is the stress levels a little bit too much? Um, because if, you know, if lifting is going to cause another stress, that could be a big considerable um, idea, like why she isn't losing the weight. Yeah. Um, is she recording 100%? You know, let's take a step back and be like, hey, did you get a scale? Like, are you kind of guessing like off the serving size and kind of being mindful instead of just you know, being more rigid when it comes to, like, tracking and whatnot. So just kind of get a good idea on there and then kind of move forward. Like, really get a little bit more clear answers yeah. out of that. That's really good. Um, that's really good. Um, that's very helpful. So a couple of ideas that I 
came to. Um, so one thing that she had talked about is it sounds like she does have, like, a certain degree of, like, she feels, like, a certain degree of guilt that she, like, eats ice cream, which, like, no one should feel guilty about eating ice cream. It's delicious. And oh, yeah. Bomb. <laughs> um, but um, as this was something that, you know, I want to bring up because you might have um, other clients that say this to you, a family member, and they say, like, oh, should I, like, eliminate this altogether? Remember, she's having two scoops per night. So if if she feels like it's something that, like, hey, what about just, like, one scoop per night so you can still get, like, you know, the taste of it and it still satisfies that need? If that was something that they were agreeable to, then, like, why not try that as, yeah. as a strategy? If, if that's something that, like, they, like, attach guilt to, like, you're trying to assist them, like, okay, like, no one should feel guilty about this. Like, you're having two scoops per night. What if we just change it to one scoop? It's just, it's just one thing to try. It might not work for you. Um, another thing she could try to do, or she could do this in, in tandem, is to increase her daily step count from 10,000 steps per day up to 11,000 steps per day. It's just a small incremental change, but that additional movement may also increase other movements, or it may reduce the amount of times um, that, uh, like feeding times, etc. So if she wasn't rigidly yeah. tracking, um, then that might also assist. Um, another thing to think about is maybe she need, just needs to pivot on the goal. What if her body composition has changed? Like she's lost fat Side mass, but she's yeah. gained lean body mass, and she yeah. likes the way she's looking. Like wow. I've, never seen like my like the side of my shoulders coming in before so she might have lost let's say like five pounds of like fat mass and like well seven seven pounds of muscle is a lot but like i don't know let's say she lost two pounds of fat mass and gained four pounds of lean lean body mass like and don't take that as a don't take this as a lose weight gain muscle (laughs) ad because that's not what we're saying this is this is what if like you know she maybe making newbie gains or something exactly so um but anyway she likes the way she's starting to look so maybe she needs to pivot on the goal and focus more just on strength because she likes the way she's feeling in the gym she likes the way she's moving in the gym and she likes the way she's starting to look so like yeah and if those are there like you probably don't need to start losing weight for no reason just because you think losing weight is going to make you look better or feel better Exactly. So it, it might be something that you want to set up a consultation with your doctor even to talk about, like, is it really necessary that I lose this weight? Like, I've gained weight, but I'm also gaining strength in the gym. And I think that my body composition has also changed where I, it seems like I'm losing more fat and gaining more muscle. I'm really happy with where I am right now. That might yeah. be something that your doctor encourages you. Like, hey, it sounds like you've really thought this through. Like, I would advise you just continue along the game plan. Like yeah, and keep still do doing yeah, doing. keep doing what you're doing, yeah. Um, so I think pivoting is okay. Um, it's not something to feel shameful about. Um, you might lose interest in the goal that you created. Um, so it's, it's important to ask, like, what new goals may have stemmed from this process. So she might have found, like, a newfound love for the gym or weight training. Um, that's totally cool. So there's a couple of different um, types of motivation that I wanted to cover. Um Intrinsic versus extrinsic. So I'll give definitions and then I'll go over it really quick. Um, so intrinsic motivation, um, I found this on verywellmind.com, which I found both intrinsic, the definitions for intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation can be defined as um, referring to behavior that is driven by internal rewards. Uh, in other words, the motivation to engage in a behavior arises from within the individual because it is naturally satisfying to you. So she... Um, in this example, the case study, Casey, she likes um, the process of going through, lifting weights, doing weight training. So she wants to continue that. That would be an intrinsic reward versus an extrinsic reward, which can be defined as um, referring to behavior that is driven by external rewards, such as money, fame, grades, and praise. Uh, this type of motivation arises from outside the individual as opposed to intrinsic motivation, which originates inside the individual. Uh, the example I put is, Doing it for the gram. <laughs> yeah, um, is that's when you see Roman start posting <laughs> butt pictures. That's when you know he's changing motivation. Yes, I did post a butt picture last week. So if you start seeing that, please comment. Just say, hey, Roman, episode 19. <laughs> Might want to listen to that you know, podcast just one more time. Refer back to, <laughs> Refer back to yourself, buddy. Like, Exciting I, yourself to yourself just, for yourself. Yeah, just start off being nice and then just be like, yo, stop pe- posting ass pictures, buddy. Yeah. Like, this is not, it's not the original goal. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So I did want to be clear that there's nothing wrong with having both types of motivations. Um, but if there isn't an intrinsic motivation that's not there, and the, let's say the crowd goes away, um, what's now motivating you? So that might be something that you need to perform some introspection and look into. Um, the last thing that I want to cover on my end was looking at flexible versus rigid rule sets. Um, the Mark Bell, Mark Bell's Tower Project, I think is what they call it. Um, yes. They had Ethan Suppley on the line. He's um, one of the actors in My Name's Earl. He's in like a whole bunch of different... Um, Butterfly Effect. Yeah, Butterfly Effect. The Ranch. Um, I, I don't think I've actually seen both of those. <laughs> the Ranch. Uh, um, check them out, folks. They're great. <laughs> I think... You know what? I think he just... For some reason, I think he's part of like Ashton Kutcher's like posse. Oh, yeah. So a lot weird. of... like His Butterfly Effect is... He's in there. Ashton Kutcher. And so is The Ranch. Um, my name is Earl. He's not in, so yeah. that's like in- independent. But just check him out. He's yeah. you. You definitely know who we're talking about. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. Um, he went through like an insane body recomposition. I think the height of his weight. He said he was like five hundred plus pounds. He's weighing maybe somewhere around like two twelve, two forty, something like that. He's like jacked as all get up. Like that's so crazy. He, stuff. Yeah, he he looks awesome. He's done a great job. Um, he's had a lot of struggles um, from like what I've heard and what he's described. Um, one of the things that he's done is he set a pretty rigid rule set with how he eats, meaning that he abides by certain principles that he will not alter. He'll, he carries food with him all the time. Um, he'll carry like a protein shake so that like if hunger ever creeps up on him, um, he has like a certain like set of rules for satisfying that, that like rejection, I guess you would say. Yeah. It's like a, yeah. That, um, it's like a sales term right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah objection, yeah. Hunger objection. Is an objection, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, no, but that that type of like desire. Um, he has a very rigid rule set for saying like this is how I'm gonna this is how I'm gonna deal with it. Versus um, so a rigid rule set could be described or defined as having a pre described um, or prescribed set of rules for an action that you do not stray away from, um, regardless of, of whatever activity might, um, like, come into, like, come into play or, like, try to interfere with your life. Whereas a flexible rule set, um, which are some of the things that Casey was implementing, such as, um, you know, hopefully I made it clear that she's a very busy working professional, um, but she still tried to find time to get to the gym three times a week and perform cardio two times a week. So she has a rule set already, which I think we could all benefit from yeah. having a set of rules and principles that we abide by. But she also recognizes that her schedule might change at the drop of a hat. So if something doesn't work today, then you decide, okay, that's fine. How am I going to f- find a way so I can fit it in tomorrow so I don't have this deficit and so that I, I don't miss out on, on getting this activity in? And hopefully that will help you keep on track to your, um, your goals and the progress that you're seeing. So those, that's pretty much the notes that I had, and those are the things yeah. that I wanted to go over. Yeah, to kind of bounce that off, like, I feel like recently I've been going more flexible goals or flexible instead of rigid right now because, um, I mean, we, we want to compete in a powerlifting meet. Um, I think a little bit more when it gets closer to an idea, when we know that date, then it'll be more rigid. But, like, like uh, just so you guys know, I messed up my back again. Uh-huh. So the the goal on that one is still flexible when it comes to, like, me maintaining strength, meaning, like, you know, maybe I'll bench and not really squat or deadlift for a while. Um, but either way, like, you know, I, I, I love the gym so much where I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop going. I mean, I don't know if I, we, we went into detail, but some of the days I would go into the gym and just do band work. And like and like body weight movements. So to a lot of people that's probably boring. To some people it might be fun, but like to me, like that's just like putting in the work. Yeah. Which is never gonna stop. Cue in Rihanna song, work, 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 work. <laughs> but uh no, I, I that that was awesome. I'm glad we're glad we I'm gonna say on behalf of the people listening and watching, we're glad that the case studies are back. Yeah. Casey case we call her Casey Case Study. Casey Case Study Fridays. Uh, it's French. It's a French last name. Casey. Casey Case Study. <laughs> um, 
But awesome. I think anything else you want to put put on there? Or? No, I think that's it. Sweet deal, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in for episode nineteen of the Games Podcast. If you haven't told anybody, tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your brothers, tell your sisters, tell their friends, tell your Co-workers. girlfriend, tell your partner's mother and father, tell your coworkers, tell your mamas, your baby's mamas, your mamas' mamas. <laughs> Um, to like, comment, subscribe. Be sure to catch us on all social media platforms that we're on. Well, pretty much Instagram. And we'll see you on that next one. Peace.